Everybody and welcome to the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. My name is Jason C. And if you're a subscriber, thanks so much for the support and for coming back to watch a new episode. Uh, if you're new to the channel, looking for the latest in whiskey and bourbon news and reviews, you have found the right place. So hit that subscribe button below and hit that bell notification so you know when I'm putting out a new video. So Wilderness Trail was one of my top new distilleries last year with their single barrel bottled and bond weeded bourbon and their Settler Select Rye that were super impressive in quality and flavor. I declare this as one of the new craft distilleries to have put out a product that can not only compete with the big boys in their own style, but would beat some of them out too. Now on April 27th, a new bourbon joined the family, the Wilderness Trail Small Batch Bourbon, which is today's Mash and Drum Review. Alright guys, so a quick recap on Wilderness Trail. Uh, in the late 1990s, Shane Baker and Patrick Heist, the two founders, were in a rock band together and quickly realized... Uh, they wanted to do something a little bit different. So in 2006, they both had a passion for creating the finest whiskeys in the world and built their distillery in Danville, Kentucky. Now, with both of them having strong backgrounds in several sciences and more than 20 years of industry experience, both Shane and Patrick have a lot of yeast strains that they've collected over the years and have combined those proprietary yeast strains with a premium selection of seed grain, corn, wheat, and rye varietals grown just a few miles from the distillery on Caverndale Farms. They also source rye from walnut-grown farms in Addervale, Kentucky. Uh, their water also comes from Kentucky's natural limestone springs. Uh, and with that, now Wilderness Trail produces two varieties of bourbon whiskey and a rye whiskey, all of which are made with 100% Kentucky sourced ingredients. All of Wilderness Trail's whiskeys are distilled, aged, and bottled at Wilderness Trail Distillery, and they spare no expense in the quality of what they are producing. An important detail is their steam is chemical free because they use a clean steam boiler, the first Kentucky bourbon distillery to do so. Now with this process, they avoid using boiler chemicals or off flavors. Only pure steam goes into the cooker and into their beer column. They also use a low entry proof, a sweet mash, and their whiskey is non-chill filtered. Hell yeah. So that brings us to today's review for their new small batch bourbon. The new small batch Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey is not only their first small batch, it's their first to use a rye as a secondary grain. Now their first bourbon releases have been weeded and single barrel, but have used the same proportions of 64% corn and 12% malted barley. This release substitutes the 24% wheat found in the first bottling with 24% rye grain. While the term small batch doesn't refer to an exact number of barrels, this release is very small batch indeed, only 10 to 12 barrels. The barrels are non-chill filtered and bottled at 100 proof. All right, everybody, so here's a close-up of the bottle. Uh, like all previous Wilderness Trail bourbons, the small batch is bottled in bond, meaning it's at least four years old. Uh, Wilderness Trail notes that they use Kentucky-grown heritage rye from a local farm, and as I mentioned, a sweet mash process, a low entry to the barrel before aging as well. Now the mash bill is 64% corn, 24% rye, and 12% malted barley using their yeast strains. Uh, they enter their Cooper Select toasted and number four char barrel at 110 proof after coming off the still at around 137 proof. This is bottled at 100 proof and carries a retail price at around 50 to 55 bucks. So let's get a pour. I really love the Wilderness Trail bottle design. Definitely sticks out on the shelf. Could really see that label. Could not wait to uh, to find this one. I was such a fan of their weeded bourbon, their first release from last year. All right, let's get into it. All right, guys. So as usual, I've had a couple pours from the bottle just to get to know it a little bit before I review it. Um, let's go to the color first and uh, let's take a look. Um, this is actually pretty damn dark for a uh, for a four year old bourbon. Um, got some really good legs to it. Again, it's non chill filtered, a hundred proof. Kind of this darker honey color, a little bit of a, a touch of a kind of amber there. Really nice, a little bit of a copper color. Really beautiful bourbon, really sticks to the glass really well too. Gotta love that non-chill filtering. All right guys, so let's go into the nose and see what we get. Here we go. All right, first thing off the bat that hits you is like this waft of vanilla, like a immediate hit of kind of a vanilla extract. It's pretty rich. Definitely get a lot of caramel notes here. A slight hint of maybe like a maple maple syrup a little bit. Definitely get a uh, definitely get a good citrus note too from that from that rye spice. 
There's a bit of a uh, of an almond characteristic in here too, which I really like. You know, for a, for a four year bottle and bond, this is um, this actually smells a little bit older than it is. Now, I will say this though: when I first opened this bottle, when I first cracked it open, it uh, it smelled a little bit like a younger bourbon on the nose. But it wasn't until I gave it some time, it aired out a little bit. Uh, I left it in the glass for a good 10, 15 minutes where all that, all those beautiful flavors started kind of pushing through. And um, now, now it's kind of reaping the benefits here, getting really beautiful vanillas, caramels, some nuttiness characteristic to it as well. There's also, uh, you know, my favorite note in bourbon, which is a, a nice butterscotch note, almost like an old dusty uh, type of bourbon type aspect to it. Just really good on the nose. Not too much heat coming through. It's 100 proof. It's pretty soft, but you do get a little bit of a tinge on the nose there. All right, let's go to the palate and see what we get on the first sip. Cheers, everybody. Here we go. The first sip here, this, this bottle's just gotten better uh, each time I've gone to it, uh, a little bit over time here. Um, that, first, that first sip I had, the first glass I ever poured, it was a lot of you know sweetness and corn mash you could kind of taste. But now, after some air gets to it, all this... These deep, rich caramel and vanilla notes that you were getting on the nose, translating to the palate. It's very mouth coating right off the bat. All right, let's go for another sip here. Cheers. Mm, yeah, right on the second sip. I love the finish on this bourbon. I love what it does right to the sides of your mouth. That rye spice, 24% rye, kind of just stays around and, and it just leaves a nice tingling, uh, nice little tingling aftertaste there. But then as it works its way back, you get this really beautiful caramel citrus type aspect to it again very mouth coating that non-chill filtered uh type aspect to it it's very creamy on the mouth feel really really good on the second sip so far let's go for another one here we go mm, that one came off as a little bit more butterscotchy now oh it seems with the more sips you take some of those uh sweeter aspects start coming out i'm getting a little bit more of a brown sugar aspect note to it now the caramels and those vanillas are starting to punch through a little bit more. The rye spice is still there, though, which I love. It's not really fading out like some bourbon zoo where it just kind of goes away. The rye spice is sticking around, leaving that nice peppery, citrusy, tingly feeling right on the back of your palate. Mm. The, whole, uh, the whole experience so far, it's really nice. The way it coats your palate, the way it works its way back. Let's go for another sip here. Cheers. A little bit more black pepper there. Maybe a tiny hint of cinnamon too. It's really opening up nicely the more and more you sip on it. Um, so now the finish for the first time after the fourth, third, fourth sip, it's starting to dissipate a little bit, but it's still there. You're still getting a nice little peppery spice there on the finish. Uh, let's take one more sip and go through the, uh, the, whole, the whole process here. Cheers. Staying consistent too, man. Love this. So first uh, first sip, you have the, the vanillas, the caramels really kind of staying true right on the tip of the tongue. As it works its way back, you're getting a little bit more of the, uh, uh, some brown sugar, maybe a little hint of uh, honey. But then all of a sudden you get this spikiness on the, right on the sides of your uh, right on the sides of your tongue there. It just leaves this peppery citrus note. And then as it works its way back, you're getting a nice finish. It's not overly done. I would say it's more on the medium side. It's not... Um, it's not overly lingering, but it's just a really, really nice finish. It kind of sticks around, kind of gives you a slight Kentucky hug there. It's just, it's just a really nice bourbon for, for a four-year. It's really amazing. Um, what I want to do is actually compare it to the Weeded Bourbon here, uh, which was their first release, um, just to kind of compare. Now, this is the uh, same mashable proportions, only you're just taking out the rye, and this is wheat. So it's 24% wheat instead of 24% rye. This is also a single barrel which uh, which can differ a little bit from barrel to barrel. As you guys know, single barrels can change flavors a little bit. Uh, if it's only one barrel, so one bottle to the next might be different if it's a different barrel. This was one of my favorite new bourbons last year for a single barrel, bottle and bond bourbon, uh, coming in with a sweet mash, non-chill filtered. This, this tasted a lot older than it really was, and so does this one. So I'm just curious in the comparison, uh, the kind of the differences here. It definitely comes off way sweeter than this one. This one is sweet, but it's just different. I feel like I get a little bit more of an oak characteristic in the uh, in the rye bourbon rather than the weeded bourbon. 
Yeah, this is just all candy, sweetness, really, really beautiful nose. Whereas this, you're getting that candy sweetness, but a little added of a, of a peppery kick. And I think there's a little bit more of an oak background in this one too. They're using a uh, char four, so you are getting some really nice oak characteristic that balances out that spice. Really nice. But let's go for a taste on the palate here. Yeah, it, it's so good. I think the process that they use, they're using that sweet mash, the low entry proof non-chill filtration. There's just so much flavor coming through. Uh, it's really remarkable. It, it's one of those bourbons that tastes older than it is. Let's uh, compare it to this one real quick. Yeah, see this one has those really beautiful sweet flavors, that, 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 uh, that caramel, that vanilla, a little bit of a brown sugar. But what's selling me on this one is that I love that little tinge on the sides of the tongue that you get and that orange spice to go along with that oak on the finish, that peppery spice. It's, it's a really, really well-rounded bourbon. Right, let's go for another sip here. Yeah, this one, this one has such a really nice sweetness to it. You almost get some fruit characteristics in here too. It's starting to turn into a little bit of a, a cherry. Uh, there's, there's a little bit of a cherry cinnamon aspect to that one too that I'm getting, at least in this bottle. Uh, definitely some cherry, some vanilla, some brown sugars there. Man, the finish on this one too, it's, it's a little bit peppery from the proof though, but it's not like the spice you're getting in here. On this one, yeah, this one, this one is coming through just a little bit darker and richer. The caramel, the vanilla, there's a little bit more brown sugar in here, maybe a hint of honey. The way it works itself back with those, that tingly pepperiness on the sides of your tongue, then it works its way back into a nice little rye spice, a little orange, a uh, little like orange zest, some citrus there. Just really good. I mean, to choose between either the two of them, it's really just kind of what you're in the mood for. You want a little something sweeter, a little something smoother, goes down a little bit easier, then the weeded one uh, will do that and also pack a ton of flavor. If you like that rye spice, if you like a little bit more of a rye kick, maybe a little bit of a deeper, darker, rich oak character and some sweet flavors, then the, then the rye one is the way to go. So the reason why I have uh, these two bottles out here too, Peerless and New Riff, uh, along with to go with the Wilderness Trail, is I really think that they are a prime example of what new distilleries are doing that are producing such high quality whiskey. Now I know some people will maybe want to stay away from a younger whiskey um, or a more expensive one, and I get that part of it. But you shouldn't always just kind of bypass them. You should give some of these a chance. Just because what we love in whiskey, what I personally love in whiskey, low entry proof, non-chill filtration, bottled and bond, uh, high proof, sourcing local grains, distilling in-house, bottling in-house, everything is a family affair. The passion is there going into these bottles. And I think for what you get, I mean, it's a whiskey nerd's dream. You're getting all these full flavors uh, that are passed to us to try and to drink. And all three of these are really great examples of whiskey and bourbons that can taste a little bit older than they really are, just based on the, on the care and the quality that's going into these bottles from each distillery. All right, guys, so in conclusion, uh, I really recommend you trying this Wilderness Trail Bottled and Bond uh, small batch bourbon. Uh, I really think it's a great product. I realize at a $50 price point, uh, there are other bottle and bond bourbons that you can get for a lot cheaper than that. Um, and I realize that. But if you're a whiskey enthusiast and you really like trying new things, this bourbon I really think is gonna impress you. It checks all the boxes that you're looking for with that non-chill filtration, the low entry proof, the sweet mash. Everything is done to such a superior high quality that if you're really looking to try something new and something different, I think you're not gonna go wrong with this. This is a really delicious bourbon that tastes a little bit older than it actually is. It's got all the flavors you're looking for, a really nice finish, and I think you'll really be impressed with it. All right, everybody, well, I hope you enjoyed this review for the Wilderness Trail Small Batch Bourbon. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you haven't yet, uh, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't found me yet on Instagram, please do, and also find me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had this yet, what your thoughts are, and as I always say, it is not about the whiskey, it is the people you share with. So cheers, and I'm gonna hit some more Wilderness Trail. Take care.